Well, hello, everyone. You're listening to Family Talk, which is a division of the James Dobson Family Institute. I'm James Dobson, and you're in for a treat today. I want to take you back 22 years to the year 2000 when we recorded what has become one of my favorite programs of all times. It occurred on a day when three very good friends came to be my guests in the studio. They were Robert and Bobby Wogemuth. Bobby has gone on to be with the Lord in 2014. She had a beautiful voice. You're going to hear that on the program today. Uh, Robert has gone on to remarry Nancy DeMoss, and Nancy has her own ministry called Revive Our Hearts. The centerpiece of this interview was Johnny Erickson Tata, who, as most of you know, became a quadriplegic when she was 17 years of age in a diving accident. And she took this tragedy and gave it to the Lord and has been an advocate and an encourager for disabled people ever since. Okay, let's get right to the interview. So enjoy the ministry of hymns. Johnny, this idea originated in your head. Explain uh, where it came from. <laughs> well, I grew up with hymns, and hymns were a way that my mom and my dad connected me and my sisters to the historic faith. And uh, so for me, whether I'm in an elevator or sitting around in a lobby in my wheelchair, Biden time, or in the airport, or wherever, I love to be singing a hymn. And it's, for me, it's a way of witnessing. Mm. And I could be on the platform of a convention such as I was a few years ago at Christian Booksellers Convention, Doctor. And I've spotted Dr. John MacArthur in the front row. Mm. And I said, John, get on up here and let's sing a hymn together. Well, he looks to his left and his right and very nervous. And he comes up. He, I've done this to him before. I have put him on the spot. <laughs> and so there, just the two of us launched into a wonderful old hymn. And I think it was a delight to the people in the audience. And of course, in the audience, there was the publisher of Crossway Books, who, mm. boing, a light bulb went on. Always over his looking head. for a new book. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he approached me afterward and he said, You really do know hymns. Because I was talking a lot about my favorite hymns from that platform. John and I were bantering back and forth. I just love singing. And I mm. love singing these wonderful mm. old hymns, Dr. Dobson. Uh. And uh, so that's how the book idea was given, given birth. And so it gives the history of the individual hymns and some of the, the lyrics, and, uh, and then there is a CD with it where you all actually recorded the music. Oh. We, we're people who love music, but we certainly don't have record companies waiting at our doors to sign us to contracts. Well, after today, you, <laughs> you might. I don't know. <laughs> but Dr. John MacArthur gives the theological context of mm. each hymn, and he yeah. does a great job. And I give a bit of a contemporary devotional vignette along with either Robert uh, or myself. And then Bobby, bless her heart, uh, the hymnologist the among lady. us. Right, <laughs> the church you lady. <laughs> Bobby, these, uh, these you, music have, has been a good part oh, of your life. Yes, a, a passion for music, uh, really, and in our family, to, to talk to the girls as they were little about what does this hymn mean? And the theology, Robert has said it's like a bird's nest on the ground. It's Theology 101 in four verses, and it's such good theology focusing on God. And so um, really some of the stories behind the hymns I did the research on, and it was so fun to find out who wrote them and why. We went to the inauguration of George W. Bush together, and we were in a rented van with a driver. There were about eight or nine of us, and we were singing these songs. It wonderful. was just wonderful. Yes. And it binds people together. And, yeah. and even whether you're, you're speaking this language or another language, Johnny has traveled the world, mm. and hymns bind people together regardless of their their nationality. I was in Romania once, and I was on the third floor. We were delivering wheelchairs over there with Wheels for the World, and we were conferring with some of the people there, a few people from Poland, several from Romania, one or two from Bulgaria, a couple of uh, Germans, myself, an American, and neither of us spoke each other's language, and there weren't enough interpreters. Mm. But somehow we landed on the fact that we all loved hymns. So we started singing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, mm. in everybody's different language. <laughs> and it was awesome to just have that unity of the brethren right there in that little room with that bare dangling light bulb and, mm. and on the third floor of that dingy hotel. Slories to the Lord because of our mutual love for hymns. Didn't Luther write that yes. hymn? 
Yes, yes he, he did. did. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, Bobby. Well, yeah. just the fact that the the a mighty fortress is our God was the battle cry for the reformers, and the world was changed because Martin Luther believed that next to the Word of God, a hymn and theology in music was the way to totally change the mind of the people and get them to focus on truly who God is and to have biblical knowledge inside of their life in such a passionate way. Uh, In fact, um, he often would say that if, uh, he said the devil would flee before the sound of praise. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing was getting the people to praise God and then giving them something to hang on to. Remember that these people were being burned at the stake if they read the Bible in their own German tongue. And often they said the people that were taken to the stake, they had a hymn on their lips as Mm -hmm. they were dying. Many of the, the old hymns were written by theologians or by ministers, weren't they? Charles Wesley, and John Wesley, and so on. Uh, well, the reason that I love the hymns is because of the theology, the poetry, and of course the music. Exactly. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to reveal my biases, and okay, take your best shot. <laughs> oh, here we go. 18 more years of mail. <laughs> I'm going to be banned again for when another I, 18 years. When I was in Young Life, uh, back then in the 60s, uh, we sang hymns, and one of the songs was a hymn, Man of Sorrows. Uh-huh. What a name for the Son of God who mm-hmm. came. And Dr. Dobson, shortly after those Young Life experiences was when I dove into that shallow water and broke my neck back in Mm -hmm. 1967. And I was languishing for a year in bed in that dark, depressing hospital room, so discouraged. And I'll never forget, uh, one night long after visiting hours were over, lights were out, the nurses were on break, my high school hockey buddy, a young girl named Jackie, had hid behind the sofa in the visitor's lounge. And while the nurses were on break, she crawled on hand and knee into my room, a six-bed ward, and very quietly uh, came past my sleeping roommates. And when I saw her form next to me in the darkness, I just said, Jackie, what are you Mm -hmm. doing here? If they catch you, they're going to kick you out. To which she proceeded to be quiet and lowered the guardrail of my uh, hospital bed. And as high school kids will do, climbed into bed with me. And in the darkness, she held my hand and held it up so I could see it. I could not feel her fingers. And in my pain and anguish, she touched mm. my heart in, in, in the only way that it could be touched back then. She started to softly sing in the dark, Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. And her singing of that hymn did more to calm my restless spirit. And interestingly enough, Dr., Thirty-some-odd years later, I received a call for, from the chairman of my high school reunion committee. Mm. I was so excited that to see all my friends and to think that I might see Jackie. But the chairman of the reunion committee told me on the phone that morning, oh, oh but Johnny, you need to understand, there, there was a horrible incident. Jackie's son uh, died. He uh, committed suicide just yesterday, mm. and it was so... So took my breath away, and I tried to get a hold of her on the phone, couldn't reach her, and so I wrote her a letter. And in the letter, I I said pretty much, Jackie, if I could be with you right now, I would do what you did with me 30 years ago. Mm. I would hold your hand and look it into your eyes and and sing that song, Man of Sorrows. Mm. I have nothing else to say. There are no answers for this kind of tragedy except to point you, as you once pointed me, to the Lord Jesus Christ, the the Lord of joy, but the man of sorrows who knows our pain. What an amazing broadcast from one of God's choice servants, Johnny Erickson Tata, today on Family Talk. We're so grateful here at Family Talk for your support and for listening to us each and every day. It's your generosity, by the way, that fuels our continued fight for marriages and families. To learn more about how you can stand with us, call us toll-free at 877 877- 732-6825. That number again, 877-732-6825, or visit us online at drjamesdobson.org. Let's return now to today's discussion with Johnny Erickson Tata on the meaningful theology of hymns. As we rejoin the interview, we'll listen to this lovely voice of Johnny sing one of her favorite hymns. Man of sorrows, what a i 
The music that you're hearing isn't just John MacArthur and Bobby and Johnny and me, but Dr. Paul Plew, the director of the chorale at the Master's College, came and spent the time in the studio with us and brought 50 of their college students. And it was an incredible experience, partly because these are young people who know these hymns. And so it was so encouraging to us that, that there is a generation of college-age students who also know these hymns and count them very dear. So those are the wonderful voices that you just heard. As has every generation of believers right. for 100 years or more. Uh, Robert, you asked me earlier to share the story of my mother. Uh, you all experienced it with Shirley and me. I would like you to tell it. Mm. Would you explain sure. what happened Sure. It was on a Sunday day? afternoon, and Bobby, you can jump in on this. It was a Sunday afternoon. Your mom was in Pasadena. You folks mm. lived in Arcadia. Right. And you said, let's go over and see Myrtle. And Bobby and I had known and loved Myrtle for a number of years. And we had sung around the dinner table at the Dobsons, especially New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. And Myrtle loved him, so we mm -hmm. knew that, and we were going to go sing with her yeah, or sing to her. Beans and hush puppies, right, Jim? Yeah, that's right, a traditional meal. <laughs> so we went to visit Myrtle, and as we were walking, getting ready to walk into the room, Jim said to Bobby and me, now, she may not know who you are, so you better be ready for that because... Some days she's lucid and some days she's not. She had Parkinson's disease. She was in the latter stages of the uh, disease, and she really didn't uh, know very much at that time. That right. I think two, two or three days later, right. she didn't even know me. Ah, so yeah. I didn't expect her to respond to you all at all. Well, we came in, and you said, do you know Robert and Bobby? And, and she kidded you. Of course, Myrtle. Yeah, she had a great sense she of She did, and <laughs> like she... she called you a nut or something for <laughs> thinking that she wouldn't know who we were. <laughs> so we sat down on the bed. We hugged her and sat down on the edge of the bed. In fact, we have a photograph right here in the studio uh. of that very day sitting on the edge of the bed. And so Bobby, Bobby's really, Bobby's like Johnny. She says, let's sing. I don't think of it. Bobby <laughs> thought of it. She said, let's sing. Well, we knew that Myrtle loved to sing because we had sung with her before. And so we started to sing. And the first hymn we sang was Oh, Worship the King. <laughs> and Myrtle seemed to know where we were and follow along, but just smiled. She didn't speak. We got to the fourth verse of O Worship the King. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Now we're sitting on the edge of the bed of a very frail woman, but guess what? She sang along. Her, her lips began to move, and then did, she didn't just remember the, the words, but she sang in alto. She was a great she alto. Mm. And so yeah. we sang, we finished that song in three-part harmony, and boy, that got us rolling, and we sang and sang and sang. And as I recall, and, you and were sitting over... this is a lady who had not expressed an original thought in probably a year, and here she is singing the fourth verse mm. in perfect... Do you remember how alto. that affected you? Uh, yes, how did that affect you? Oh, <laughs> I bawled like a baby, that's what. Do you remember that? I, sure I could did. not get control of myself mm -hmm. because I'd heard her sing beautifully mm -hmm. like that uh, when I was young and she was much younger. And those tracks in her mind had were so deep. Mm -hmm. The fact that she remembered every word to every hymn after that. Yeah, uh -huh. this is this is what part of, of our dream for the O Worship the King project is that people would take their children and push them ahead 60 or 70 years and realize that what they're doing is making an investment yes. in their own children yeah. so that when their children's grandchildren are sitting on the edge of the bed, these mm. will be the things that really control their subconscious mind. It's a powerful and wonderful thing. Or, or if their child has a disabling injury, such as I had at the age of 17. Dr. Dobson, I was so confused and so despairing and depressed, but the, the memory of those wonderful texts, um, such as, Long my imprisoned spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night, Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flamed with light. And just to rehearse a, a verse of a hymn like that, when, when mm -hmm. you're facing a life of paralysis, it, it's the biblical insights, as we've shared already, the theological rit richness of these texts. There is a place for praise choruses, but there's nothing that will replace what you just sang. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The incredible theology. That was Charles Wesley. That yes, it was. And yes. you're right. It's all theology. And at a time when I was doubting the goodness of God, doubting my salvation, doubting God's sovereignty, I had a hymn 
that I could rehearse in my head and sing in the quiet of the night when my roommates were asleep. And I think it was God's way of taking his gentle hand and impressing those truths deeper and deeper into my heart that made the huge difference. And as Robert has said, that's our hope for parents, mm. for their children with this project of Worship the King. There wouldn't have been a Charles Wesley without... Susanna Wesley. <coughs> that's yes. right. Mm. And what a mother. She had the children. She had um, 19 children and homeschooled them. And every day she would get up and the kids would start. Before breakfast, they had to sing a psalm. Mm. And that's how the boys started with getting all these beautiful lyrics and um, meter in their mind. And so the combination of music and lyric does something. It goes so deep into your heart. It, it envelops your spirit. And I think the uh, if I had two textbooks to give to my children, um, I would say a Bible and a hymn book. Mm -hmm. So it's not just in church to sing these, but to have these for your own personal devotions, to take these, as Johnny does, uh, written on a card and in front of her all day. I think, you know, to take them with you in your purse or, right. your, um, or your briefcase. When I travel, uh, I memorize my friends who travel with me, whether it's my husband, Ken, or girlfriends. We pick a hymn for a trip. And when we were in China last fall, we picked, All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? And we memorized all four verses. And these Chinese looked at us, some of our Christian friends over there, you people sing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but when we got to the Great Wall of China and my husband Ken was lifting me up, I don't know how many steps, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dobson. It must have been 120. <laughs> Dear Ken, he lifted me up to the top of the Great Wall of China, and I'm singing, love lifted me, <laughs> love lifted me. And it's a way of witnessing. Yeah. We are to be Christians who exude the joy of the Lord Jesus. And little wonder the Bible tells us to, to um, have a melody in our hearts when we wake up in the morning to ask the Lord Jesus to give us one of his melodies to sing throughout the course of the day, that it be the witness, that it be the testimony, that people might look at us and say, something's awfully different about you. <laughs> and 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Well, when you've got a hymn on your heart, when you're memorizing scripture, such as Bobby and I were just talking about, it is a way of praying without ceasing. Mm -hmm. If we can be singing a hymn during the course of the day, we are we are offering unceasing prayer, and that is so exciting. Mm. Johnny, I would think that uh, It Is Well With My Soul would be high on your list of oh, favorite yes. hymns, uh, uh, sitting in a wheelchair since you were a teenager. Uh, does that mean a lot to you? It Is Well With My Soul. The, mm. the, the beautiful story behind that hymn, and perhaps quickly you can share it, Bobby. The man that wrote it was had already experienced in Chicago the loss of his business and the loss of his son, and he sent his wife and four children on to Europe to be a part of Dwight Moody's crusade. Yeah. And while they were going across, another ship hit them. And his wife went on and sent a wire to him and said, saved alone. And he quickly got on another ship and went over, and they paused at the place where his four precious daughters had drowned. And um, he wrote, it is well with my soul. Like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my lot Thou hast taught me to say So 
That is beautiful. Well, Isn't it that is beautiful? Well with our songs, My isn't goodness. It? There is a place for praise choruses in churches today, certainly, because I know that's the style of language and music that younger churchgoers typically enjoy. Uh, I just hope we can all agree that no matter what style of music we sing, if our heart is focused on God, uh, then we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've really enjoyed interacting with you all today. In fact, uh, Johnny and Robert and Bobby, um, I appreciate you being with us today, and I know that you have to leave, uh, but we're just going to go on talking and singing today, and we'll record that and let our listeners hear uh, what uh, takes place uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's something good going on here. I'm being ministered to and uh, if you all don't mind, we will just continue uh, talking and recording. Again, thanks for being with us today. We'd love Thank to. Thank you. You've been listening to Family Talk, and that was the first half of Dr. Dobson's conversation with Johnny Erickson Tata, Robert Wolgamuth, and Robert's late wife, Bobby Wolgamuth. They've been talking about Johnny, Robert, and Bobby's book called O Worship the King, Hymns of Assurance and Praise to Encourage Your Heart. O Worship the King was published back in 2000, but just this year, Johnny released a new book about hymns, and it's called Songs of Suffering, 25 Hymns and Devotions for Weary Souls. Please join us again tomorrow for the conclusion of Dr. Dobson's conversation with Johnny and Robert and Bobby Wolgamuth. Until then, if you'd like to learn more about today's guests, their book, O oh, Worship the King, or Johnny's new book called Songs of Suffering, just go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash family talk or give us a call. Our number is 877-732-6825. That's 877-732-6825. Now, if you enjoyed today's program, would you tell us what you liked about it by joining in the conversation on our Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk Facebook page? Every day we post the daily program as well as encouraging words from Dr. Dobson along with brand new videos and much, much more. So go and like and follow us on Facebook by searching facebook.com for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Roger Marsh, and from all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, may God continue to richly bless you and your family as you continue to grow closer to Him and to each other. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.